This is a $2 million diamond. The reason you can't see it is because it's coated with a nanomaterial that makes light almost disappear. Even under bright illumination, the facets and reflections that give diamonds their beauty just disappear. The stuff that makes this possible is the blackest substance made by humans. But is it the blackest thing on Earth? This bird might disagree. Hey, smart people, Joe here. What does it mean for something to be black? So this is something that we normally think of as black, like really, really black. But then you see it next to something like this. We painted this with the blackest paint that you can get. And this is really, really black. But then when you see it next to these super black bird feathers, I don't know, I think it's neck and neck between science and nature here on the blackest black. You be the judge, I don't know. This is an orange. And this is one of the blackest paints in the world. It really messes with your brain. It's almost blacker than black. For something to be black, it has to stop light from getting back to your eyes. But it turns out there are different blacknesses of black, different materials and structures that trap or absorb light in different ways. Some allowing as few as one photon in a hundred thousand to escape. Beyond being cool and fun to play with, what's the point of stuff like this? Well, ultra black materials have a bunch of uses from lining the inside of telescopes to help us see the light from distant stars, to making better solar panels, to radar tricking camouflage. For decades, scientists, engineers, even artists have been racing to create the blackest black. And they're getting some inspiration from some pretty interesting places. These are terrifying looking. This is, looks like a, a gallery of monsters. These represent some of the blackest fish ever found, ever discovered. These guys represent some of the blackest organisms known on the planet. The deep ocean is full of strange life forms that we know very little about. Karen Osborne is a scientist at the Smithsonian trying to shine a light on these mysterious creatures. But there are a few species she could never quite get a look at. So I started studying these guys out of pure curiosity. I could never get a picture of these black fish. I just got these beautiful silhouettes. These super black deep sea fishes have names like anglerfish, dragonfish, and fangtooths. It's a pretty accurate name, actually, when you take a look at it. These are really cool, and this, I think, is the perfect way to experience fish like this that are made mostly of teeth, is inside of jars and separated by air. For these fish, surviving means not being seen. In the inky water at the bottom of the ocean, that may sound pretty easy, but it's actually harder than you might think. By the time you hit a thousand meters, which is like 3,300 mm -hmm. feet, there is no light whatsoever coming from the surface. Even though there isn't a whole lot of light coming down, there's a lot of light in that habitat. So mm -hmm. if you go down and, and you turn off all the lights, you suddenly start to see lights all around you. If I am startled that you're here, I spew out a whole bunch of bioluminescence. It lights you up so that something else can see you and go, ooh, that looks tasty. Many deep sea animals have such sensitive eyes that they can detect just a single photon in that dark environment. So to stay unseen, these ultra black fish have evolved an extreme way to absorb almost every last bit of stray light that hits them. On the surface of their skin is a super dense layer of pigment granules. When light hits that pigment, it disappears into the pigment molecules. Our skin has pigment granules too. How densely those are packed is why you might have lighter or darker skin. But these fish have skin pigments built like nothing else on Earth. These blue dots are pigment granules in the iris of someone with brown eyes. Now compare that with how dense the pigment granules are in the ultra black fish skin. The density of pigment is crazy. Because of how these pigment packets are shaped and arranged, any light that isn't immediately absorbed by one bit of pigment bounces sideways into a neighboring bit of pigment. Like a sticky sponge, but for light. They take the same pigment that they normally use in the same type of cells they normally use, and they just exaggerate it. And they move those cells, instead of within their skin layers, they move those cells 
out to the very surface. How much light are these absorbing? So to be considered ultra black, you have to reflect less than 0.5% of the light that hits you. So they're, they're really not bouncing back any light. When we first tried to measure these guys, uh, <laughs> reflectometers couldn't measure small enough to be able to get a good reading. It's like, well, it's zero. And we're like, well, it can't be zero. Like how close to zero is it? <laughs> really, 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 close really, really, really to close zero. to zero. Studying what makes these deep sea fish so black could even inspire new ways for us to hide things. And so all you have to do to replicate this, right? If you wanted to make, you know, armor or, you know, camouflage clothing or you want to make something disappear, is you just need the right size melanin granules, the right size and shape melanin granules, which you can make bacteria produce. So we can we could have biotech recombinant deep sea fish pigments that we could paint with soon, is that what you're saying? You could. Or okay. you could build you could make a shirt out of I like or that. something. Okay, so let's see, we can, not a fair comparison maybe because you know, I know A, it's dead and not in its natural environment, but we're neck and neck here on blackness. This is the best that humans can do pretty much. Do you think there's something even blacker waiting in the deep sea or have you reached like peak blackness? I reached peak blackness. These fish may be the blackest things in the ocean, but humans have made things that are even blacker. The pigment in this paint is on a similar level with what happens in those fish. It absorbs about 99.4% of all the light that hits it. That means just six out of every thousand photons manage to escape. So much light is absorbed by these pigments that we start losing the ability to pick out shapes and depth. I mean, my shirt is black, but look at this. Black, black, black. Orange. Humans have made even blacker things than that. But to do that, we have to leave pigments behind and go to nanotech. In 2014, scientists realized that tiny forests of carbon nanotubes can be used to make ultra black materials. Unlike pigments, which absorb light, these nanotubes trap light in sort of molecular cages. So photons that get in can't get out. The blackest carbon nanotube coating developed by MIT engineers traps 99.995% of light, meaning that only five in 100,000 photons escape that forest of light trapping nanotubes. That's what made this diamond disappear. Unlike paints, these nano coatings have to be laid down using elaborate processes, so their applications are more limited and considerably more expensive. But you may be surprised to learn that evolution figured out this way of using nanotech to make ultra black more than 100 million years before we did. I'm so excited to see these birds because I've only ever seen these on TV doing ridiculous dances. This one almost looks like it's dancing. <laughs> it's, it's got the, the right, right outfit, It's got the right sure. look. What we're looking at here is the blackest of black birds. These are three species of birds of paradise. There are many more than three. They're found on archipelago in Papua New Guinea. These have some of the blackest feathers I've ever seen in a living, or blackest anything I've ever seen in a living thing. But why these birds are black is kind of weird. Unlike deep sea fish, these birds aren't ultra black for camouflage. They use their ultra black to get noticed. These guys, we think, and, and we have pretty good evidence to say this, that the reason these guys are so bizarre looking is that they have an extremely intense sexual selection. One female bird of paradise who sadly, it does not look as cool and exciting <laughs> as these guys is gonna choose a mate and his only job is to provide genetic material for the offspring. He does not help raise them. He doesn't help protect them from predators, just delivering the genetic material and off he will go. And so if she wants the best shot at having the best offspring, she needs to pick the healthiest male. And those two things come together in these birds where they're doing these fabulous dances to show off how cool they look. A male with brighter feathers and stronger dance moves can communicate how healthy and strong his genes are to any female who's watching. 
That's the basis of sexual selection. So this sort of evolutionary race has taken place on this island of the pressures of mating mm -hmm. have pushed these birds to ridiculous extremes. <laughs> Yes, yes, like the most bizarre of all dating scenes. <laughs> because there's black and then there is this. This is like, you lose the shape of where the edge of the bird is because it just, it's like a void of darkness. It's short circuiting Presumably my brain, it's I... also short circuiting the bird's brain, but we haven't asked them yet. <laughs> So that's the coolest part of the blackest black, right? We have the blackest black here, and then we have the brightest bright in the front. And when these birds are doing their mating displays, what they're doing is they're holding up these feathers in a way that arranges the blackest black next to the brightest bright iridescence. Okay. And that contrast would be startling by itself. But even more cool, is that what it's actually doing is tricking the visual system because looking at that blackest black makes it impossible to really know how bright the bright is. Usually your brain is figuring that out for you and adjusting it constantly. So scientists have looked at deep down at the structure of these feathers to try and understand how is this so black? And it turns out that the answer is that like velvet, Velvet ha is black, right? But it has little fuzzy bits that mm -hmm. stick up. Like velvet, but better than velvet. These feathers have little bits that stick up. And when the light goes in to the top of that feather, then instead of bouncing straight back out, it's kind of scattered back around in all of these little nanostructures that stick up and bounce the light back in. The fuzzy structures in the feathers work like a cage for light, just like those carbon nanotubes. When light goes in, it just bounces around. Ultimately, these feathers trap something like 99.95% .95 of light. That's remarkably close to the blackest black nanomaterials that humans have ever been able to create. Other animals like butterflies, spiders, even snakes make ultra blacks using similar pigments or structures as these fish and birds. Nature was able to mold these incredible materials millions of years before we did through the forces of evolution and selection. And nature's nanotech has inspired us to create our own. Because of ultra black materials, we've been able to take pictures of the universe like never before, harness energy, even make our own camouflage. Who knows what we'll think up next? Ultimately, making something totally and completely black may only be possible at the extremes of physics and space-time, but nature has had some surprisingly not bright ideas of its own. Stay curious. Thank you so much for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed that episode. And we have a special treat for you. It is one of our favorite times of year. It is time for the drum roll, please the PBS Digital Studios annual audience survey. This is your chance to tell PBS what you like, what you don't like, what you'd like to see more of, even vote on new show ideas. So if you'd like to continue shaping the future of PBS, everything that we do here on YouTube and beyond, there's a link down in the description below. We can't wait to hear from you. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching our latest video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you can find out when we upload a new video before anybody else. That helps the rest of our curious community find these videos in this algorithmic wonderland that is YouTube. And as always, you can check out our Patreon page where you can support making videos just like these. With your help, maybe we can afford to paint the whole orange next time. There's a link down in the description where you can learn more. This stuff is really weird. See you in the next video. Probably. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. It really messes with your Blaine. 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 But look at this. This is, am this is ridiculous. Can't even see it. Oh, there it is. Whoa. Nanotech.